Yo, what's up, guys? A little bit longer of a live stream this time. Had to get my DoorDash, um, but we got some plays for the boosted payouts. I just wanted to make sure I had enough time to lock those in. Don't want to miss out on any, you know, easy money. But now we got a little bit more time, at least I do. So let's go ahead. No DoorDash on the way. Let's find some plays. Let's find some plays for this weekend. We can kind of look at all these different platforms you know, underdog still has some promos. Got to lock those in as well. Um, you know, you can see I'm already on Scherzer under four and a half strikeouts. I still think this play is really good. If you're looking for a play for tonight on underdog fantasy. So again, like the way that underdog fantasy works for anyone new is they have fixed payouts, right? Like once this loads up on underdog fantasy, any two pick entry you create, there's no NHL tonight. Okay. Well, any two picks we select, right? We're always getting a three X payout, right? Overs, unders, switch this to a different pick. Like it doesn't matter. It's a fixed payout platform. So the strategy for beating them, like it literally doesn't matter what picks you select. You're always getting a three X payout, soccer, college football, whatever. So it all boils down to your win rate. So on underdog, I got a little spreadsheet. On underdog fantasy, you'll see for these three pick entries, you have to win 55% of your over-unders of your plays to be profitable. So like here, 100 to win 600, right? That's a nice little three pick entry, 100 to win 600. 6x payout is what you're getting for these three pick entries. And it does matter on these platforms, like how many picks you're going with. So on underdog, these three pick entries are good, but on prize picks, they suck. Prize picks only gives you a 5X payout. Underdog fantasy is, you know, 6X, like you can see right here. So it does matter how many picks you go with, but it all just boils down to, can you win these over-unders above 55% of the time, which I'm not going to say is, you know, easy to do, right? You got to win 55% of your picks. That means you're only losing 45%. So you got to win these, you know, 55% of the time. Um, but, you know, it's possible to do. You just got to find spots. Like you can see here, Scherzer, his under is super heavily favored. So again, it's kind of weird in the playoffs to see Scherzer's strikeout line at four and a half. But again, like I always just follow the data. I follow a very data-driven approach. Is you're going to see all the books have ripped his under to being a minus 184 favorite, right? He's a huge favorite to go under. So the under is more likely than the over. So obviously, if you're going to take Scherzer in your entry, you should want to take his under, right? Because you have all these data points. Everything's baked into the market. The fact that it's the playoffs, right? Lineups, like I say this all the time, but, you know, when official starting lineups come out, like here, this affects, you know, Seeing the Astros starting lineup, like this affects Scherzer's strikeout line, lineups, weather, playoff, situational stuff, injuries. It's all baked into the market. So probably they're going to go to the bullpen early in this game. Scherzer under four and a half seems like a pretty good pick to go with. That's what the data is telling us to do. The data never lies long term. But anyways, what other picks we got on underdog? So we can go back here. We can see like, okay, like, you know, the WNBA is about to start. Ah, damn. Well, maybe we have enough time to play this. Look at this. Javier, his outs line. Let's take a look at this. I mean, we're going to have to move quickly because this game's about to start. But all these sports books have his outs line at 13 and a half or 12 and a half. 13. And then underdog is sitting at 14 and a half. So it's like, yo, what are they doing? So we want to take him under 14 and a half outs. Right again, like all these other books have his line at 12 and a half or 13 and a half. Um, obviously, the jump from 12 and a half to 14 and a half isn't as big as like 14 and a half to 16 and a half because an inning is ending if you do that. But I mean, still, this seems like a pretty dang good play to go with. So, what we want to do is just like go out here. I've already used Scherzer, so I'm not going to be able to play that again. But you can see there's some other plays that you know may have some value if we look at like you know. Jackie Young, and maybe this game already started. So maybe they already pulled WNBA lines. Nope, it looks like, eh. Well, it's 5 o'clock now, so it's possible they just, like, you know, whatever, got rid of it. 
No, they didn't. So maybe it's just Odd Sham removed the game because it's about to start. Yeah, you can see odds are starting to come down on these sports books. So, anyways, we'll skip over these WNBA plays. Um, but there are some other plays, right, that, you know, we could possibly go with. Although there's just not a ton. Uh, yeah, so maybe we go over to prize picks. Not a ton, not a ton of plays that we haven't already locked in. Although we can use this with LeBron, right? They have this promo. So if we go back here, they have a couple promos going on that we do want to play. So obviously we want to take LeBron over in points. Um... So obviously we want to take LeBron over in points. So what I want to do is I'm trying to move quickly. We want to take Javier under and outs. And then, you know, we ideally want to go with a three pick entry, you know, for this LeBron promo again, because three pick entries are the best slip type. So if we just go back to underdog fantasy, we can see like, okay, where else is the data, you know, pointing us? We have APA over one and a half. This is a league of legends play. It looks like the most random slip of all time. But again, if that's, what the data is telling us to do, that's where we're going to play. So $10 max, you can see right here. So I'm going to lock in this play. You know, the game's about to start. And this play on Javier obviously seems very good. All the other data points in the market, you know, have his line significantly lower. Like if we look at prize picks, right? And again, everything is baked into the market. And obviously, because it's the playoffs, the Astros are down two to zero. His strikeout line is lower than it will usually be. Like all this stuff is not factored in to historical stats, but it's priced in to where sports books are setting their lines, where their odds are. Like a very simple example is you can see for Thursday night football. So if we go to Thursday night football, nope, that's not Thursday night football and not what I wanted to look at. But if we go to the Jaguars game, um, you're going to see like, on Trevor Lawrence, potentially being injured, right? It was a little questionable. You can see lines ripped towards the Saints. They moved from minus 102 to minus 168. Then on Trevor Lawrence, probably healthy. Lines have kind of like been bouncing around. But all this stuff is reflected in the market, right? It's all baked in, which is why you want to look at sportsbook odds, you know, as much as possible um, when you're finding your plays. So anyways, it's like, okay, now we have this LeBron promo, but still we would like something for this Marquise Brown promo as well. So I can refresh this. I mean, Underdog had four promos today, so that's pretty crazy. But what we want to do first is be like, okay, is the value on, um, so if we go to receiving yards, well, I guess this is total yards, so it's rushing plus receiving, but we want to, you know, get a sense, of course, like, Again, I follow a very data-driven approach. We want to get a sense of like, okay, like Brown, is there a little value on his over or his under? You know, it looks like sports books have him favored to go under, right? Pinnacle right here, Penny, known to be one of the sharper, smarter sports books. They have his line at 56 and a half with the under favored. Caesars has the under just a touch favored. You know, Tipico has the under favored. So again, like all these books have sophisticated models. They're taking bets, moving around lines based on where action's coming in. So it's not like this play has a ton of value on its own. But I mean, hey, for a shot at $100,000, I'll play it, right? Like might as well. And we just need to find ideally, you know, a couple picks that we can pair with it. So whatever, we can take like Malik Washington under seven. Nope. So let's go back here. We have Malik Washington under seven. We'll just straight up follow the data and then move on to uh, summit over one and a half. Sure. Right. Just letting the data, right? Like if there's more value in esports, I want a bunch of plays on esports, $20 max. So sure. Here's, here's my entry for today. And then, you know, if you were on the live stream previously, the sweat for tonight is we need Corey Seager over two hits plus runs plus RBIs. But anyways, let's go back here. And now we can look for some plays on like Fliff. We can look at all these different platforms, parlay play, prize picks. Again, the more of these platforms you have, the better. You know, all these books have different lines from one another. They have different promos, right? Like today, Underdog had some really good promos on Brianna Stort, boosted payout, LeBron, free win, over under 0.5 points. So the more books, you know, you have access to, obviously the better. Um, 
But anyways, we can go to parlay play next. Damn. So parlay play has a lot of plays available right now. Like we just took APA over one and a half because we thought that had value. Parlay play is even better. So I'm an idiot. Not actually. Like I still think the play is decent, but we can get him over one. Underdog Fantasy has his line at one and a half. And Hot Streak has his line at, um, or Underdog actually bumped him up to two. So that's crazy, right? That's that's two X, right? Like this is crazy. You have one and then two. It's like imagine a player shot on goal line being one and a half versus two and a half. Like these are these are the things that matter long term. You know, when you're trying to make money on parlay play. Now you can see a lot of these picks are in the same game. So I don't think parlay play lets you pair players from the same team together. I would love to. Pairing overs from the same team is positively correlated. But I actually think Prize Picks is the only book platform that lets you pair overs from the same team together. But anyways, we can take a look at Tua. And we'll see. Do they let me, you know, play this if I just try to do a little test slip of a dollar? So you're going to see you can't select one player or more per esports team. So this play on APA is really good. So now let's take a look at the market. You know, again, the data never lies. Let's take a look at like, like what are they doing, right? We're literally creating our own Taco Tuesday, our own discount. Tua, obviously, good quarterback. They're playing the Eagles, tough defense. All the Bucks have Tua's line at 269 and a half yards, right? They're all opening his line there. All these books have sophisticated models, but they all set lines independently because they want to be unique. If every sports book had the exact same odds, we wouldn't need hundreds of them, right? But like, I mean, it's kind of like keep it simple, stupid. I'm not saying this plays a guaranteed win, but we're getting 13 yards of value relative to the rest of the market. You know, it's very simple logic. It's kind of like if I told you, hey, I'll let you buy Facebook at $100. You should probably do it. It's trading at 316.97 in the market. And this price is determined. It's the equilibrium of supply and demand from, you know, all investors. There's millions of people who wake up every day and their full-time job is to determine if companies are overvalued or undervalued. Investors, hedge funds, traders, whatever. So like this is the equilibrium where supply and demand meet. So obviously, if you could buy Facebook at $100, that would be a steal deal. And it's kind of the same thing here. Two is line is 282 and a half here, 269 and a half across the rest of the market. We want to slam that under. So now we have two good picks, but ideally we want to get um, a three pick entry or sorry, six pick entry. This platform parlay play, they have crappy payouts. You know, you can see they're only a oh, 5x payout, not 6x like underdog for these three pick entries. But if we take a look at this player, right, and again, this platform, you know, is the more books you have, the better. Like so many people are loyal to a sports book. It's like these books are trying to make money off you. You shouldn't be loyal, right? Um, anyways, sorry, rushing yards. I don't want to search for receiving yards. And let me close some of these tabs as well. So we want to go to rushing yards. And let's take a look at this. So it's the same concept, different sport, five yards of value, right? Parlay play screwing up. And again, Odds Jam just like hunts through the market. All these platforms has ten, have tens and tens and tens of thousands of lines. We just want to see like, yo, where are the few spots where Parlay plays asleep at the wheel? You know, we have a play with an edge. And next you can see we have Calvin Ridley under four and a half receptions. So again, like just like underdog fantasy, if we go back here, just like Underdog Fantasy, this parlay play platform, you know, they have fixed payouts. We take him over, we take him under, over, under, we're getting the same payout. So the reason the under is the sharp pick is you'll see here on the positive EV tool, this play is also there. All the sports books have him super heavily favored to go under. Caesars has ripped him all the way down to minus 169, minus 160, like all the books have them super heavily favored go under. There's no, there's no like, you know, hidden tricks here. 
You can see it's also recommending a play on Alvin Kamara under rushing yards, but I don't think that really pairs well with Ridley. So what we can do is next we can go to like Diego, our boy Diego, over 14 and a half um, rushing attempts. So this pairs pretty nicely because we're taking the UTEP player to go under. So this play pairs pretty nicely. And again, what's nice about parlay play is you can like create your own discount. We're already getting great value on Tua's under, but if you wanted to, you can only do it once per day for $20 max, but we could bump his line up five yards and get him under 287 and a half. So that's a kind of like nice feature, you know, of, um, of this platform. And maybe we do that for this pick on Jordan Love, right? Or we can just take him under straight up. I mean, he's looked absolutely horrible. Nah, that's not maybe fair to say, but maybe we just go with this play, right? I'm trying to move quickly. I won't use my bonus on it. You could use your bonus on it if you wanted to, but let's just lock in this play. So here we go. We got six picks, 40X payout, 60 to win 2,400. And again, like, you know, I'm up. They only have a $60 max bet size. So what's important is getting down the volume. You got to be placing a lot of plays. Right? you got to find a lot of plays with an edge. Nobody wins every time, but literally just following the data, nothing complicated, up 6700 bucks on 25K total bet over the course of a few months. Right, So, like, obviously nothing, you know, not, nothing to write home about, but still pretty good, right? $7,000 profit on one buck. So, you know, we found a lot of the value, okay, on um, – uh, on parlay play, we found some good plays on underdog. You know, we could create a new slip for our discount if we wanted to. Like, we were going to take Camara under, for example. If we wanted to, we could take Camara under. We wanted to take this guy over. So we have Yeon over, our boy Yeon over, and then we wanted Camara's under, right? Under 54 and a half. Jonathan Brady under 42 and a half receiving yards. Right. And then what we could take is we can find things that pair well together is we could take like Diego Pavia and bump him up to 230 and a half. And let's just see, you know, any combo props or anything like that available. Ridley interceptions we already have. So we still don't have six picks. I mean, we could venture... Actually, this pairs very nicely. So when you're betting on esports, players on opposing teams, Piosic and Faker, it's positively correlated to take players to go the opposite direction. So what I mean by that is like, and here's the slip I'll go ahead and lock in. And this is a discount play, so it's only going to be a max. You know, you can see we're able to, place of of twenty dollars so i bumped up pavia i got his under i'm also taking his main receiver to go under in receiving yards so those those things are positively correlated right like i'm taking a quarterback to go under a receiver to go under as well like obviously if we're playing on prize picks and you know we want to take Derek carr to go over or whatever, like you can look at any of these people. If we want to take, you know, Goff to go over, then it probably makes sense to take St. Brown going over. Like prize picks is going to give you a 3x payout if you take St. Brown's over or under. So obviously if Goff goes over, St. Brown is a lot more likely to go over. So you want to try to find things that pair well together. And essentially in League of Legends, if you look through all the historical data, which I've done, is... Players on opposing teams, you want to take one over and one under, right? And again, you can look through the data yourself. It's just how League of Legends correlation works. Kind of similar to in the NFL, if you want to take Goff over in, you know, passing yards, you probably want to take St. Brown. If there's value on both these plays, there would be, you know, a big incentive to take both plays over together because those plays are positively correlated. But anyways... So we got some plays on parlay play. Next, we'll go over to prize picks. We can also take a look at Fliff. I mean, more bucks, the better. More bets we can get down with an edge, the better. So lines have been like ripping towards USC. 
again, maybe it's lineup changes, players injured for Utah, sharp action, who knows? Um, it's all baked into the market though, right? So we can lock in some fliff plays as well. And again, like what's hard about underdog is this is a platform in prize picks where you need at least th three picks, right? Three picks are the best type of entry and they have fixed payout. So everything's a little more confusing when you're betting on traditional sports books like fliff, you know, it's a lot easier because all you're doing is you're looking for value in the odds. And like one strategy I personally, you know, really like, and this is a play I actually locked in is, is arbitrage. So if you look right here, you can see, you know, I have, um, uh, where is it? I'm on Cincinnati plus four and a half at minus 200 on flip. You may be thinking like, oh, do you just love that pick? No, I don't. Lines are just so out of sync with FanDuel that you can bet Cincy plus four and a half and Baylor minus four and a half on a different book and make a risk-free profit because all these books set lines independently. It sounds too good to be true, but this bet, Cincy plus four and a half at minus 200, I paired on FanDuel, Baylor minus four and a half. I made a risk-free profit of, you know, 11 bucks and 36 cents. And you can see that on my Twitter that I bet this play on FanDuel as well. But like, if you want to, like arbitrage is when these books mess up their lines so bad, you can bet equal and opposite outcomes, Baylor minus four and a half, Cincy plus four and a half, and guarantee yourself a risk-free profit. This is how I started sports betting. Literally just grinding out arbitrage profits, you know, it takes two seconds to place a bet. A lot of people will be like, eh, seems like a lot of work you got to do, you know, to, to make 11 bucks and 36 cents. It's like, it's a risk-free $11 I made at home sitting in my PJs in like 20 seconds. Pretty, pretty good. You know, like free money, Cincy plus four and a half minus 200. And then you go over to FanDuel, you just follow the calculator. 113.64 on Baylor minus four and a half. We make 11.36 no matter what, right? If Baylor covers the four and a half spread, we lose 250 on Fliff. On FanDuel, we make 100, you know, our stake on FanDuel, 113.64 times 2.3, right? We bet 113.64 at plus 230 odds. So our profit on FanDuel would be 261. We make $11. If Cincy covers, we lose 113.64 on FanDuel. We win 200 bucks, 250 bet at minus 200. Or sorry, we win 125, 250 bet at minus 200. We win 125 bucks on Fliff. We make a risk-free $11. I mean, again, it's not glamorous, but it's the easiest money you will ever make sports betting. And again, that's just one bet. There's also an Arb and Cincy plus three and a half right here. So I literally just went over here next. Bet this, made another risk-free 926. In less than two minutes, I'm $20 richer, right? I make a risk-free $9 here, $11 here. Pretty chill. Then here's another one I bet. Risk-free, you know, $9 here. That's $29 in risk-free profit for like 20 seconds of work on Flip. Just search for the games, lock in your bets, make some risk-free money. I mean, seriously, what's better than that? Nothing. And depending on the books you use, you know, you may see different arbitrage bets like, oh, here's some on points bet, right? If you use points bet. So depending on where you're located, you may use different, you know, sports books, whatever. But um, yeah, anyways, let's go to prize picks. So we can go over to prize picks and damn, there's just not a ton of value on prize picks right now. Well, there's a little. So like you can see this play. If we go here, yike. I mean, some of these plays we locked in in the previous live stream. I mean, if we had to make a slip, we can make a slip. I mean, like if we look at this guy, yike, it's like, okay, like what is the data showing? So let's go over to League of Legends. So again, like esports, you know, it may not be something you watch a lot, but like what's great about esports is, um, you know, what's great about esports is there's just a ton of games. So you can see, like, I got money on Sam Houston. Somehow they were a small favorite, and these, this team sucks. They're 0-6, but I, another data-driven bet. Hopefully hopefully Sam Houston can bounce back. And then I need Seager over so we can take a look at the MLB as well. So 
So good to know. But anyways, we can go back here. So I just kind of bounce around, right? Like prize picks has, you know, not a ton of value, a little bit. So if we wanted to, like, there are some good NFL plays, but again, like some of these plays I locked on, locked in in a previous live stream, but you're going to see this player, Yike, all the sports books have his line at two and a half underdog prize. Un sorry, underdog fantasy, hot streak, parlay play. They all have his line higher. Even if you don't use those platforms, you only use prize picks. Those are data points telling you, Hey, his line should be higher. I also think, um, Travis Etienne and Saquon under are both good plays to go with. I already locked these in. You can see right here. And I already have this play. Yike. Like I already have four of these picks, right? So, but the reason is right. Prize picks again, it, it's, it's not a traditional sports book, right? They have fixed payouts. It's weird. This is not a normal sports book. You take the over, you take the under, you get a three X payout. Right. So if we take them both to go over, whoa, we're getting a 3x payout. If we take them both to go under, we're still getting a 3x payout. So what you want to see is just like, yo, like which outcome is more likely. So we want to go over here and you want to find plays like ideally you can find plays, right? Like Travis Etienne is a big favorite to not score minus 150s, minus 150s across the board. Minus 148, you know, like he's pretty big favorite to not score a touchdown. Now, on the other hand, you know, this play on Saquon, obviously he's been injured. Like he's not as big of a favorite. So if we only had had to pick one, we'd rather take Travis to not score a touchdown as opposed to Saquon. Saquon's a little, you know, less favored to go under. Only minus 140 versus, you know, Travis is minus 155, minus 150. You know, so, and then, you know, there's no value on any of these other plays. So those are some good plays on prize picks, but why don't we go to Fliff? Again, there's a lot of good arbitrage bets on Fliff. Even if, you know, I recommend using it. There's tons of sports books too. Um, depending on where you're located, you know, all these books like Pinnacle, Resorts World, I mean, Lovig, Bet Online has some good arbitrage bets. It's just, it depends what sports books, you know, you have access to stuff like that. Um, but anyways, we can go back to this positive EV tool and we can, so arbitrage betting is great. You just need a lot of sports books and you know, you gotta just put in the work to hit these arbitrage bets, make some risk-free money. You can always like, you know, this play right here, right? Like, you know, obviously you can tailor it to your bankroll, but I mean, this is a risk-free, Fliff has a max bet size of 250. So this is a risk-free $9. Like it helps you build your bankroll so you have more money to bet on other things if you want to, like prize picks. Um, but anyways, also whenever arbitrage exists, like one of these bets has to be profitable, right? Like that's why understanding odds and market and stuff like that is so important to, you know, making money sports betting is like. Understanding odds makes you a risk-free, you know, risk-free profits here. So that's good. So I think I've locked in most of these arbitrage bets over 1%. Obviously, like the 0.41%, it's like, I mean, if you're a real hustler, go make a risk-free $2 if you have the bankroll to. It's free money. But um, obviously, higher percentage, the better. More sports books you have, the better. More sports books means more promos. Underdog Fantasy had a lot of promos today. Looks like the pitchers are starting well, which isn't good for me because I need Seager to go over, <laughs> But um, which was a play from the live stream, but still. But anyways, let's look through the market again. Like any new plays that kind of strike our eye. Sometimes there's good TD plays on. So like, you know, sometimes these TD plays are on Underdog Fantasy as well, like there's pretty good TD plays. I mean, I won't bore you with looking through all this crap, but if we look through like the NFL, I mean, do they have any TD plays? Jared, no. Doesn't look like they have any rush plus. So the Josh Jacobs play isn't good. He's not really favored to go over or under. So there's just like no value in the market. I mean, we can look at like Jalen Hurts. That's one player I haven't looked at. 
So if we look at like player touchdowns and we go to Jalen Hurts, is Burrow more likely to go over or under? You can see he's a slight favorite, but only a slight favorite to score a touchdown. So not enough value to like justify betting. College football, sometimes you can find some, some pretty good ones. So if we just switch this to like college ball, maybe we can find some plays. Sometimes the plays are crazy good in college football. Um, but the issue is not a bunch of books post lines on on college football. But if we look up this player like Xavier Rest, we can take a look at him. It's like, eh, he's like a, you know, he's a slight favorite to score. That's not what we want, right? We want to see big favorites. Roman Wilson, we can take a look. Is he more likely to score or not score? Nah. One-way markets, nah. Not a ton of books have lines up even yet. I mean, I can almost guarantee you, though, there's some good ones in here. You just got to hunt for them. Walker, slightly favored to score, but not enough value to justify betting. We can look up our boy Drake May, slightly favored to not score. But anyways, let's lock in a little flip parlay. So we have USC minus five and a half. So it also doesn't make any sense. Like, <laughs> Fliff is such an interesting sports book because if you look at them, they have the same odds on the minus five and a half and the minus seven, which makes no sense, right? Like, if USC wins this game by six points, minus five and a half wins, minus seven loses, right? Like, these are different bets. They have the same odds on USC minus five and a half and minus seven, which Obviously, it doesn't make a ton of sense. So the minus five and a half has value, right? And now this play is arbitrage to pinnacle, right? So if you use pinnacle, so if we go here and like, you know, if you select pinnacle, you'll see this arb show up. But like if you used pinnacle, but it's not legal in the US, so you're not going to use pinnacle most likely. But if you're in Canada, maybe you do. You could arbitrage bet this and make a risk-free profit. But still... Even if you're not in Canada or Europe, right? Like Pinnacle is still known to be one of the smartest, sharpest, whatever you want to call it, sports books. They move lines a lot. They have high betting limits. They're taking bets from all over the world. Most of the sharp players play on Pinnacle in other countries. So like their lines are very accurate, right? So you want to put weight into their odds. You're going to see they have, you know, USC minus five and a half at like minus 152. Now, you may be thinking like, oh, well, why don't you, you know, bet that with that WVU play? So if we look at the West Virginia play, where is West Virginia? Um, I already have it. I'm just trying to figure out where. Again, like early bird gets the worm. You don't want – so here I have West Virginia minus 2.5 at minus 120. So I'm already on this West Virginia play, which is also an arbitrage bet to Pinnacle. But again, like you got to remember too, like how do how do sports books work, right? They make money by charging a spread, right? So whenever arbitrage exists, like one of these bets has to be profitable, you know. Like you can't have the ability to bet Cincy on one book, Baylor on another book, and make risk free money if neither bet is profitable. One of these bets has to be good. Granted, that doesn't mean it's a lock, right? It's like if there's a coin. That's 60% to show up on heads. Obviously, if you're flipping it for 100 bucks, you'd rather take heads because it's 60% to show up on heads. But it's not a guarantee to show up on heads. You're gambling, right? Like it's a play with an edge where you're guaranteed to make money long term, but it's not a lock. But you can see USC minus five and a half, right? So like Pinnacle has this at minus 152. So this is Pinnacle's market right? Plus 128, minus 152. This is what they have USC minus five and a half at. Let's go. I need Sam Houston. So this is the most important calculator in sports betting, a no vague calculator. You know, they have them at minus 152. So heavily favored to cover on Fliff. So when you remove the vague, the fair line, the true odds, the fair odds, the no vague odds. This is the most important calculator in sports betting. I say it all the time, but it is. 
This is the key to the financial industry. It's how the whole financial industry works. People charge spreads, right? It's like a car dealer. They charge a spread. You go into a car dealer, they'll be like, hey, I think your car's worth 14,000, so I'll buy it for 12,000. And then they'll try to sell it for 16,000, right? If they tell you they'll buy your car for 12K, it's because they think it's worth more than 12K. So it's the same thing here. The way that every single sports book works is they have models. So Pinnacle, the sharpest bookmaker out there, they have a model that's saying, hey, we think USC minus five and a half should the true price is minus 137.52. That's the fair odds, the true odds with the VIG removed, right? Then they juice their markets, right? They add in the VIG. They add in this, you know, 24 cent spread that they have in their market. They have a 24 cent spread in their market. So you got to remove it. It's like a stockbroker. They think a stock is worth $10. They say, hey, I'll buy it for nine or I'll sell it for 11. They charge a spread. So if someone says, I'll buy it for nine, I'll sell it at 11, you know they think the true price of that stock is 10 bucks, right? So same thing here. We want to remove the VIG, remove the juice to get the fair price. So according to Pinnacle, sharpest bookmaker out there, they think this line should fairly be priced at minus 138 and we're getting it at minus 120. So that's a no-brainer. So it's a profitable bet. And again, when a bet's profitable, you got options. You can include it in a parlay. You can include it as a straight bet. So we'll make a parlay because that's more fun. But again, like it doesn't matter, right? On sports books, you can play a profitable bet as a parlay, as a straight bet, really whatever. Um, but we want to go to Cincy minus two and a half. At minus 130, we won Ohio minus 16 and a half. Fun stuff. So we're locking in all sorts of bets. And all these plays have an edge. So it's very simple. Like if all your plays have an edge, you know, you'll make money long term. Like there's not my, there's not that much more to it. More books you have access to, the more money you're going to make. Lines moving towards Hawaii. Maybe I got to slam that here in a bit on win bet, but I try to focus on the main sports books everyone has access to in these videos. So you can see like, okay, like these plays are a lot less profitable, 0.01%, 0.067%. So it's kind of like when you're arbitrage betting, obviously for 20 seconds of work, literally place this bet on FanDuel for 250 or on Fliff, hedge on FanDuel for 129.63, you make a risk-free 926. That's pretty enticing for 20 seconds of work. But as the profit margin goes goes down, it's like, eh, is it really worth the time, the effort, whatever? It's kind of up to you. And it's the same thing for EV bets. Like all these three plays have pretty good EV, right? Like we have this play, 4.28% profit margin. Where again, Fliff is clearly screwing up. They're giving us the same odds on the minus five and a half as the minus seven. Makes no sense. This play seems pretty good, 1.64%, 1%. But like all this other shit, like 0.67%, it's like, eh, whatever, right? 0.29%, it's like, eh, why dabble? Because this isn't like underdog fantasy where we need a minimum number of picks to go with. So I'll lock in this little parlay. So that's fun. We can go back here. Oh, baby. We got a sweat. Oh, whoa, man. I should have had money on the Astros. So this is good for Scherzer, right? We're on Scherzer under four and a half strikeouts. Pull him, pull him, right? Pull him out. So anyways, we can go back here to underdog and we can take a look at some of these TD lines quickly because why not? Oh my gosh, they have so much up. So all these chili peppers suck. In general, my recommendation would just be avoid them. I've never seen a good chili pepper. So I've just started to skip them over. They really juice them. So there's just like not any value on these chili pepper ones. Underdog added them recently. But again, I'm actually like not that happy they're added just because like there's no value on them in general. So it just makes it harder to look through the website, but we can take a look at like Jace McClellan. 
so you can see here, like no books even have two way markets on him. Um, 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 um. So Garrett Green. You can see like he's not a big favorite to go over or under. So there's just, there's no value. I mean, like, you know, it doesn't, it's so many, so much of this chili pepper crap. Um, so all these plays now we've looked through. So I, I, I mean, I like to clear out the board. Like when I'm calling it a day from sports betting for a bit, I like to just see like, okay, like, you know, did we get rid of all the good bets? <laughs> So essentially, like on prize picks, it's like, yeah, I think I've hit all of the ones available. There's now only two plays in green, two plays with value on this fantasy optimizer. No, it's, you know, on underdog, it's like there's a couple plays, but like I think some of these plays we've already locked in as well. So it's like, eh, whatever, like not worth the squeeze. And on this platform, parlay play, we've locked into a nice little correlation slip we have. So FanDuel has some promos. Like, again, the more books, more promos. You could do this shit forever. I mean, like, you can see here they have a 50% um, uh, profit boost on FanDuel for Thursday night football. So what you could do is I can show you. And I think most people get, like, uh, your max bet size. But just to show you how profitable some of these promos can be, is FanDuel, right? So we can just search for FanDuel on this low holds tool. And then we can search for the game, the Jaguars game. And all this tool is going to do is it's going to show you where FanDuel has value relative to other books. So you can see here, right? They have the first quarter total points and maybe it moved at plus 136. So they still have it up actually. So they have the first quarter total points at plus 136. So with a 50% profit boost, right, we're getting the over seven and a half. We're not going to be getting plus 136. With a 50% profit boost, we get 136 times 1 1.5 plus 204 odds. With the profit boost, that goes to plus 204 odds. And DraftKings has the under seven and a half at minus 142. Usually FanDuel has a max bet size of $50 for these promos, right? So this is going to go from plus 136 with the 50% boost. It's going to go up to plus one, plus 204, right? So 50% boost. So that means, you know, this is going to go up where the plus 136 to plus 204, so then you can just pull up your own arbitrage calculator, right? So we're getting plus 204 on DraftKings or on, on FanDuel with this promo on the over seven and a half first quarter total points. We're getting plus 204. DraftKings has the under at minus 142. Is you can turn this promo on FanDuel into a risk-free profit. Again, this promo is going to be like a 50% profit boost is a ton. Right, plus 200 to plus 300. Basically, anything you bet would be profitable. But if you wanted to hedge and make a risk free profit, you know, this is going to tell you hey, if you bet $90 on DraftKings on the under, well, the arbitrage calculator right here, it actually says bet, you know, 91 or sorry, it actually says bet if we have $50, you know, profit boost. 50% profit boost, $50, 50% profit boost on FanDuel. The arbitrage calculator tells us, hey, hedge bet 89.19. But usually I recommend round your numbers, $90 on DraftKings on the under at minus 142 odds. So now you can just go through the math, right? These are equal and opposite outcomes. We're hedging this FanDuel promo. So there's two options, right? The FanDuel side wins or the DraftKings side wins. So if we go over on FanDuel, we're up 50 times 2.04, 102 bucks. On DraftKings, we're down 90. We make $12. On the other hand, if it goes under on FanDuel, we lose 50 bucks. On DraftKings, we're up 90 times 100 over 142, $63. We make 12 or 13 bucks no matter what. And there's a small discrepancy again because we're rounding this arbitrage calculator to 90 bucks. 
But that just shows you how profitable these promos can be. I mean, this is a risk-free $10, $12, right? And then you can see like, okay, like does DraftKings have any promos, right? And sometimes you can just pair these promos against each other. What does DraftKings have for the game? Happy hour, super boost, 25%. You know, they have a 50% boost too. That's crazy. So what you could do is right, like what's the point spread for this game? is if you take a look here at the NFL, you know, the Saints are minus 122. Um, So we can just take a look here. What are the odds for this game? So the Jaguars are plus 106. So the Jaguars are best off. So imagine you put your profit boost, right? We have the Jaguars. We have the Saints. The Jaguars are slight underdogs. There's some questions it seems like around... Trevor Lawrence, and both profit boosts are 50 bucks that you can bet. So just imagine you bet 50 bucks on both, right? Or wait, so let's go here, yeah, right? And we can just kind of go through the math. Like, what if we did this? So both profit boosts are $50 max, right? And we have odds, bet size. So just imagine you put... Your $50 profit boost on the Saints on DraftKings. So we have the Saints, and then we have the Jaguars at plus 106 on FanDuel. Bet, and then book, and then this is DraftKings, this is FanDuel. Now, what happens if the Saints win, and then what happens if the Jaguars win? And then we have FanDuel, DraftKings, Net Profit. You know, I kind of like to go through the math, see how everything works out. So if the Saints win, we're up 50 times 100 over 122, right? We would be up 41 bucks, right? 50 bucks bet at minus 122 odds, you know? 90, 98 total payout, 40, 98 in profit, 41 bucks. But again, we're getting a 50% profit boost. So we're actually up 61 bucks. Oh, shoot. This is supposed to be DraftKings and then this is FanDuel. So if the Saints win, we win 50 times 100 over 122 times 1.5. We're getting a 50% profit boost. On FanDuel, we're down 50 bucks. You know, we're up $11. On the other hand, on the other hand, if the Jaguars win, we lose our 50% profit boost on DraftKings. And on FanDuel, we're up 50 times 1.06 times 1.5. We're up 80 bucks. We make a risk-free $30. So regardless of what happens, if the Saints win, we win 11 bucks total. If the Jaguars win, we win 30 bucks total. Literally, just taking advantage of these Thursday night football profit boosts, we're making a risk-free profit of $10 or $30. How insane is that? I mean, it's literally insane. Just taking advantage of promos. This doesn't even have anything to do with like any complicated strategy or odds jam or whatever. Here we have an arbitrage bet for Christmas. It's like, yeah, I think I'll stay away. You also want to consider time. Like that game is just so far away. Why would I place an arbitrage bet for Christmas when I can get arbitrage bets for tonight? Here's an, so anyways, we'll call it a day for now. Hopefully this live stream was helpful. We locked in a bunch of good bets. Thanks so much.